Exterior, winter green on the wall, Prosser Estate, Drive Folly, day 1956. A sporty car comes roaring down the long, tree-lined drive of an idyllic Cotswold estate. The very impressive pile of the manor itself is visible over the slight rays of the hill, at the top of which a faux quaint though really ostentatious little stone folly is nestled just beyond the tree line. The car veers off the driveway, pulls up alongside the folly. A young man and young woman climb out, smartly dressed as if for a posh party, laughing, stumbling a bit, like they've already started drinking for the night at the Drones Club. We're going to be late for Lady Prudence's soiree. Don't be daft. There's no such thing as late. For one of her dues, they last the whole weekend and people just come and go. She leads her day by the hand up to the folly steps, pulls him inside. Cut to interior of the folly day. They stumble in, hands on each other. It's a bit shadowy inside, but the sybaritic looking chaise long is still visible in the shaft of the afternoon light from the door. But, um, you know, having a bit of a go in her private folly before we've even said hello. Trust me, from what I know of young Lady Prude, she wouldn't mind our little detour at all. She shutters him with a hard kiss. He forgets any further objections and lets her pull him down to the chaise long. She lies back as he works his way down her neck with more intense kisses. Her arm drapes casually down towards the floor, brushes against something. A curious look on her face as she turns her head to see what it is. She sees the pale face of a dead man lying on the floor, only inches away from them. She screams. Cut to titles. Exterior Prosser take grounds, folly day. Police called in surrounds the, the folly area. Inspector Jack Wellman, early 30s, looking more fresh-faced cricketer than seasoned copper, stands in front of it, gazing thoughtfully. Sergeant Francis Byrne, in late 40s, strides over to where the shaking young couple stand, stands a bit too stiffly to attention next to Wellman, almost as though he's going to salute. Inspector Wellman, sir, I have a... Welcome to Wintergreen on the Wold, gateway to the Cotswolds. Sir? That quiet little roadside sign on the drive in from Gloucester. Sounds so idyllic, doesn't it, Sergeant Burnham? But those two, not even in town for two whole minutes and they find a dead body. Because they were somewhere they shouldn't have been. Trouble only comes to those who look for it. Yes, well, let's just worry about the murder for now. Father Prosser can concern himself with their other alleged transgressions later. Or his sister, more like. If those two had just gone straight to Prosser Hall as they were meant to, then the poor chap in there would have gone undiscovered for who knows how much longer. Sometimes the rules need to take a backseat to human life, Sergeant. But, sir, without rules, the villains would run the whole show. And speaking of villains... Wellman turns. John Hawkwood, mid-late thirties, is getting out of his car. Tall, dark, annoyingly handsome. He flashes his cheeky, charming, movie-style grin at them. Pauses to light a cigarette. Knows he's made a tension-grabbing entrance. Burnham snorts in disgust. Wellman smiles indulgently. Hawkward. Right on schedule, as always. How do you suppose he hears about these murders so quickly, sir? Well, WPC Gale took the call, which means word of this is probably all over the town by now. But that devil's got no business playing detective, sir. He's a convicted murderer and ex-felon. Ex being the key word, Sergeant. Man's also an ex-prodigy from the yard, who's paid his dues and then some, so... I don't mind giving him a fair crack of the whip again. Burnham minds. He holds his tongue as Hawkwood saunters over, Detective E. Trenchcoach flaring behind with a disreputable coolness of John Constantine rather than a rumpled Columbo, quietly singing Henry Martin to himself. There were three brothers in merry Scotland, in merry Scotland there were three, and they did cast lots which of them should go, should go, should go and turn rubber all on the salt sea. Gentlemen, appropriate ballad for this gathering, wouldn't you say? Hardly, since we're not brothers, we're not remotely in Scotland, and you're a killer, not a robber. Awkward, uh, unfazed, shiggly pokes the uptight bear. How does anyone so literal ever manage to have any fun, Sergeant? Addie give you a bell, I take it. Oh, she's a brick, that Addie. I'm guessing they found the body. Hmm, on the way to Prosser Hall. For Lady Prue's knees up, yeah? Right. How mm. did you know? When is Lady Prune not having a party? Also, I was invited. You? I very much doubt that. Can I help it if I'm devastatingly handsome? Besides, doesn't she invite everyone to her dues? Oh, sorry, Frank, your invite get lost in the mail again. Yeah? As I've said, it's Francis, not Frank. And you will address me by my rank, former Inspector Hawkwood. Steady on, Sergeant. Crime scene. <clears throat> Apologies, sir. Anyway, those two were on their way to Lady Prue's when they decided to stop here first for a, um, you know. Seriously? You're a copper, not a boy scout. 
This is from a man who's neither. Can we... Can we please just go into the folly now? One murder at a time? Of course. After you, Inspector. To first a wellman with a polite after you gesture, then flashes his cheeky grin back at Burnham as he heads to the folly. The sergeant follows, eyes down the right. Cut to interior folly day. Father Orville Prosser kneels beside the sheet-covered body. Finishes the last rites as wellman walk with Burnham enter. He looks up, a bright smile replacing his sombre cast. Ah! Inspector Wellman. Rising awkwardly, he nearly drops a little prayer book on the body but for a quick saving catch. Oh, Father Prosser. You know Inspector Hawkwood. Burnham opens his mouth to object, but surprisingly Hawkwood speaks at first. Uh, uh, former Inspector, as Sergeant Burnham never fails to remind us. Just a humble private detective now, me. Finished with your incantations, Father. I'd like to take a deco. Um, yeah, yes, I'm done. But, but they're actually not incantations, actually. All right with you, Jack? Be my guest. Getting a bit crowded in here. Give us the room for a bit, lads. PC's nod, yes sir, and exit the folly. Father Prosser hesitates. Uh, um, in, in, Inspector, uh, would you mind if I uh, uh, stayed? Uh, may, maybe I, I could help with you? Actually, Father, why don't you go on ahead to Prosser Hall? Oh, uh, but, but I, um... Tell your sister everyone needs him to stay put so we can speak to them, but don't mention the reason yet. Wait, are you saying you didn't actually lock the place down yet? That's the correct procedure. It's more a, it's what a more experienced inspector would have done. Wellman reddens, painfully aware of his newbie status. Just thought if there's a chance the killer's at the party of hers, I didn't want to risk scaring them off. And I sent a few men to watch the place, make sure no one left. Stealth surveillance, I like that. And I'm guessing he was one of Lady Prue's lot. Posh clothes, fairly good looking bloke too. What does that have to do with anything, his looks? Maybe nothing, maybe everything. Devil's in the detail, Sergeant. That's one hell of a knife wound. Crime of passion, I'd say. Dashing sorts like us tend to provoke strong reactions in folks for good or bad. <laughs> bad in his case. All right then, Father. Father Prosser, having leaned in for a better look, clearly now regrets it, turning green. Uh, perhaps you're right, Inspector. I'll uh, go, go and see to Prudence. <laughs> Chance to go. This time really does drop his prayer book as he nearly collides with Burnham in his rush to leave. Burnin simmers but swallows it, unwilling to tell the off the priest yet. <clears throat> Sorry. Almost stumbles down the folly steps as he goes. Wellman represses a smile. Burnham rolls his eyes. Why does he even need a prayer book? Shouldn't he know that religious clap trap by heart by now? <sighs> Memorisation was never Orville's strong point in boarding school. <laughs> Should have stuck with being a wealthy, woolly-headed aristo. Not exactly one of God's savvier picks for a padre, that one. So, do we know our friend's name? Uh, no, no ID found on the body. Police surgeon said he's only been dead a few hours at the most, so chances are he was one of Lady Prue's guests, as you said. Party's already started for the weekend. Hawkwood picks something up with a dark lapel of the jacket, mm. sniffs at it, cautiously tastes it. Burnham grimaces. Salt. Are you mad? That could have been poison. Ah, uh, but it wasn't. Could pretty much tell even before I tasted it. But thanks for your concern, Frank. So he ate before he was killed? Too much of it to account for just sloppy eating. Almost like it was deliberately... Hmm. Peers close at the partially opened mouth of the victim, using a pencil from his pocket to prise it into it a bit more. And every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Wellman and Burnham try to look, lean closer in too. What is it? You ought to have the pathologist take a closer look at this. Seems his whole mouth is filled with salt. I, I didn't notice that. Did you, Sergeant? Not something I tend to go looking for, sir. Not as surprising, though, given some of the odd sorts Lady Prudence invites to her soirees. Wouldn't say that to her face, Sergeant, or you'll never get an invite. So, enlighten me. Accelerates decomposition of uh, the body, sir, or simultaneously cutting down on the odour of putrefaction so as not to attract animals and insects to said corpse. Top marks, Sergeant. Of course. According to the Church, it also allegedly wards off evil. Yeah, well, they would believe that. Didn't work on me, though, did it? <laughs> Well, maybe our killer was trying to minimise the smell until they could come back to bury him. Could be. Let's have a good old chinwag with Lady Prue and her guests. Shake one of them loose. Hawkwood heads out. Chummingly slaps Burnham on the back, pouncing. Burnham stiffens with jaw-twitching self-restraint. Cut two. Exterior Prosser estate grounds fully day. Hawkwood, Wellman, Burnham head towards the police cars. What would you like to do with the witnesses, sir? Wellman looks over towards the still-rattled young couple. Let them go, Sergeant. They were headed to Lady Prue's party anyway, yes? Just make sure they know to stay there for now in case we need to speak to them again. 
Yes, sir. He peels off with purpose as Hawkwood realises, looks around. Oh, something seems off. The crime scene photographer is... Sent him to get the photos. Develop straight away. We'll show him around and see if Lady Prue or any of her guests recognise the victim. There you see, Jack. Can't understand why your daddy had you transferred out to the sticks when you're not quite the inept newbie you pretend to be. Shall we? As he saunters off over to the car, Wellman shakes his head with a rueful smile at the backhanded compliment and follows him. Cut to exterior prosser Hall Manor House Day. Wellman and Hawkwood lean against the police car in the front drive, waiting. Hawkwood lights up again. Wellman waves to another police car pulling up. WPC Adelaide Gale, early 30s, hale and hearty, gets out. Trots over with a large envelope under her arm, brimming with Dunkirk spirit. Crime scene photos, fresh from the dark room, sir, like my grand scones, hot from the oven. Appreciate it, WPC Gale. Addy? I'm awkward, just because she's a female officer doesn't mean you should address her so informally. Oh, pish posh, that doesn't bother me one jot. You know me, sir, not one to be hung up on rank as much as some certain sergeant is. You mean Frank? <laughs> oh, you terrible you are, sir. <laughs> don't I know it, Addy, love. And I've got the record to prove it. <laughs> you know, as long as she's here, why don't you make use of the extra manpower, Jack? Seeing as how you'll have Uncle Tom Cobley and all to get statements from in there. Hmm, a couple of dozen at least. Care to lend a hand, WPC Gale? Don't mind if I do, sir. Pins could do a good stretch after being behind a front desk all morning. Right, come on then. Hawkwood Gale start to follow him at the front steps. Hawkwood pauses, something else nagging at him. Hold up a minute. You said Lady Prue hasn't been told exactly what's happened yet, yeah? No, not yet. Well, wouldn't, Why? wouldn't Romeo and Juliet had to have told her what they found if they called the station from here? Closest phone to the folly, right? They say where they were calling from when they called Addy? Oh, gosh. Come to think of it, no. No mystery there. I asked about it when we questioned them back at the folly. They were too embarrassed to tell Lady Prue what they'd been up to when they found the body, so they went round the back to the tradesman's entrance, <laughs> asked if they could call from the kitchen phone. And the servants didn't tell her ladyship about the murder? I'd be shocked if they didn't. Right bunch of gossips, that lot. Well, they only spoke to the cook, and she was too busy to bother about why they wanted to use the phone. <laughs> why is this important, anyway? We're, we're, we're about to fill her in. Hmm, I suppose it isn't. Just trying to be thorough. Come on then, Lady Prudence awaits. He bounds up the rest of the stairs to the grand front entrance with Wellman and Gale trying to keep up with his wake. The sound of faint jazzy music spills out as they enter. Cut to interior prosser hall, front hall day. Hawkwood, Wellman, Gale enter as the butler closes the door behind them. Lady Prudence Prosser, wearing a flamboyant, posh bohemian ensemble in glam chic hairdo, would make Auntie Mame swoon. Mingles amongst the eccentric mick of posh artsy guests. She spots the gang and lights up vivaciously. Oh, Inspectors Wellman and Hawkwood. She sets sail towards them, Father Prosser following. Wellman sighs, bracing himself. Hawkwood notes it with a wry smile. Oh, this is ever so much more grand than the W.I.'s bingo nights. Mind that dress would probably set me back a few quid. Wellman opens his mouth but opts to direct a polite smile at Lady Prue instead as she bustles up with theatrical flourish. Theatrical flourish. So glad you both decided to attend my humble soiree after all. <clears throat> Lady Prudence. You were invited too? Uh, well, yes, but I had to work. Oh, stuff and nonsense. Surely you can slip in a few cocktails in between murders and speaking of which, my dear brother Orville tells me something is afoot in my folly. A murder, no less? How thrilling. Uh, sorry, I, I know you said not to mention it just yet, but Prue has a way of getting things out of me. <laughs> no need to apologise to them, Orville. I know humility becomes a priest, but it ill suits a proser. Walker raises an eyebrow, the only one who twigs the sudden hint of haughty artiso iron in the buoyant bohemian lint. <laughs> yes, Prudence. Sorry. Oh, uh... WPC Gale! Oh, Addy, please, Father. Uh, yes, Addy. Shy um, awkwardness between them. Hawkwood twigs that too, smiles to himself. Berman seems to shock up to Father Prosser's general social ineptitude. Father Prosser, why don't you um, go and give some spiritual comfort to the couple who found the body? It looked like they could use it. Oh, yes, of course. I'll, I'll do that. Thank you, Inspector Woman. Purpose renewed, he nods to the gang and retreats gratefully. Good thinking. Wellman quietly shushes him as Lady Prue turns back, all smiles and warm charming. Well, now that you're here, why don't you fill me in? 
Who am I missing from my little soiree? Well, that's what we'd like to find out. I'd like to show these to you and your guests, get some statements about who was where earlier. Oh, no, needs must, Inspector. Though I should think I would have noticed if one of my guests toddled off in mid soiree to commit murder. Well, actually, milady, it's all too easy to quietly kill someone amid the distractions of a really big do. <laughs> Trust me, I ought to know. Major Eustace Lyon, Alpha Ball Blushtree, comes over. What's this I hear about a murder, eh, Brutus? Oh, my dear Major Lyon, I... Well, I suppose it was only a matter of time before one of your more bolshy minded guests brought the police to your front doorstep. Marcus Deering appears behind him, the spectacled Tweedy but snarky pre-beat uni intellectual, <laughs> smirks into his drink. Bolshy? He means me, of course. Though if I was going to kill anyone, it would be... Oh, Marcus! Honestly, the two of you... And I suppose you're meant to be one of those modern women officers. Gail steps proudly to attention, her cheeriness a shield. Yes, sir. WPC Adelaide Gale, sir. Isn't she just delightful? Major Lyon winces, not sure how to respond to either of them. Had uh, WPC Gale, would you assist Sergeant Burnham in getting the statements from the other guests? She nods, heads off. Awkward, who's already been studying everyone while they've been chattering and sniffing, nudges Wellman and li regarding Lady Prue, Major Lyons and Marcus. And um, we'll start with you three first if you wouldn't mind. Orchid winks at him with the approval of their reactions, unconvinced, discomfited, annoyed before being interviewed. Cut two. Interior across the hall, sitting room day. Wellman notebook out, sits with Lady Prue, Hawkwood stands back, smoking. Watching everyone with his charmingly wry wit, nose in settles them. Major Lyon slash Mark could trade fierce looks that would earn them top marks out of Lancaster, York duster. <laughs> Good heavens, it, it's William, William Dormer, one of my regulars lately, guests, I mean. A tragic waste of a gorgeous face. Major Lyon reacts, stiffens as he looks at the pic over his shoulder, his, fast dark, his face darkening, awkward blocks it. Friend of yours, Major? More than friends, they served together, a couple of colonialists proudly serving queen and country. Which is more than you ever did, daring damned socialist. Well, at least Dormer had the good sense to finally resign his commission. Is that why you suddenly weren't so chummy with him earlier? That's none of your damn business! <clears throat> well, actually, it... <sighs> and if you're trying to pin this murder on me, may I point out that you Never liked Dormer. Well, no wonder he was a... Uh, uh, gentlemen, please. You know the rules about civility at my soirees, regardless of one's political belief. Have some respect for our poor Mr. Dormer, at the very least. A break continue, Inspector. Hawkwood, raised eyebrow, amused and impressed with her dressing down with shouty boys. Lisa over to Wellman. Maybe you should let Lady Prue handle the investigation. Actually, Major, with all due respect, I'm afraid it is our business. If, if, if you had any sort of disagreement with Mr. Uh, Dormer... Well, it was rather odd that you two were suddenly chalk and cheese when you used to be such boon companions. See? I wasn't the only one who noticed your little falling out. I've lost my place. <laughs> Where are we? Yes, all right, I admit we had a difference of opinion, but it wasn't anything that serious! Not the way I looked at it when I saw you arguing out back through the window this morning. Insert flash cut. Intrigued Marcus sees Major Lion Dormer through the window, arguing in the back garden across a hall. Back to the scene. Marcus smirking at the smouldering Major Lion. Couldn't tell what they were saying, but whatever it was, it certainly got Lion all shouty and red-faced. Huh. Like he is now. So, uh, what was it about then, Major? It was, well, dash it all, it's, as Deering said, I was upset with Dormer for having resigned his commission. He was, he was a good soldier. Hawkwood tilts his head. He's been studying him. No. I beg your pardon? No. You're lying. That's not the real reason, is it? How dare you? How the hell are you anyway? You're clearly not with the police. Hawkwood shrugs, not at all intimidated by the bellowing. Well, not anymore, at any rate. Ah, well, this is inspect... Former Inspector John Hawkwood. He's merely assisting us with the inquiries. John Hawkwood? Any relation to the infamous Sir John Hawkwood? Direct descendant, as it happens. There's no one in the peerage book with that name. Not anymore, anyway. 
chap was a medieval knight who went south, quite literally, became rather a crafty and brutal mercenary. The devil incarnate, they called him. Yeah, I've been told there's a slight resemblance. So, history repeats itself, eh? Fall from grace, I remember now. Big to do in the papers a few years back. So-called golden boy of Scotland Yard. This Hawkwood got himself sent up for executing villains instead of arresting them. Shouldn't you be rotting in prison? No, oh, didn't you hear? I'm reformed now, actually. Apparently. Now, about your transgressions, Major Lyon. Damn impudence! I won't be questioned by a lawless vigilante! Wellman springs up from his seat, ready to red card them both. Right. Hawkwood, go and wait in the hall for a moment, would you? He started it. Major Lyon starts to lunge at him. Wellman inserts himself between them, holding a restraining hand up, don't even. Please, go. Now. I've got this. Fair enough. It's your case, Inspector. Just mind the lies. With one last da darkly dazzling grin at the Major in the room, he turns and leaves. Lady Prue shakes her head. My poor party. Well, death at a do isn't quite as glamorous as the pictures make it out to be, is it? Cut to. <laughs> the silent flashback. Marcus is standing in the corner of the room at the rear cross hall, glances out the window as the lights of the cigarette. He sees Major John Lyon having a heated argument with Dorma outside in the back garden. Marcus is intrigued that they're too far away to hear exactly what's being said from where he is inside the house. Still smirks anyway, voyeuristically enjoying the sight of these two having a go at each other. Satisfied, he finally turns from the window and leaves as they continue the argument. Cut back to the previous scene. Cross the hall, front hall, sitting room down. Hawker closes the door behind him as he comes out, leans against the wall with a weary sigh, cheeky again replaced with a tired, troubled look. He pulls the silver chrome cigarette case out of his pocket and to get a cig, pauses to stare at the case itself, fingering it as it's lost in the, lost in the memory. Everything all right, sir? He looks up, sees Gail and Burnham, one concerned, the other stony. His grin reappears, but with a tinge of melancholy. Gail, Burnham. You don't need to call him sir. He's not with the police any. Oh, shh. Go on, sir. You were saying? How goes the investigation, then? Like silk, Addy. Jack's just getting a bit of practice taking statements all by his lonesome. Got to help him with this lot. And you? Oh, we've taken statements from most of the guests. Haven't found anything suspicious yet, though. What about the staff? Have you... Uh... On cue, Rihanna Weir comes striding towards them, striking, radiating an imperious air off a toff, but dressed like a cook. Hawkwood's already intrigued. Her accent is more... <laughs> Wash all middle class as she enters uh, the gourmet chef background. You there, are you the inspector in charge of this investigation? Me? What makes you say that? Well, you certainly dress like a police inspector. Well, I'd like to think I'm a bit sharper dressed than the usual. And but... these constables certainly wouldn't be in charge, would they? No offence. I'm sure it's marvellous they're allowing women police officers these days, but they're hardly going to let you run things, are they, sweetie? An incredulous girl opens her mouth to retort, but Rihanna's already dismissively turned back toward Hawkwood. Gail daggers. Says the cook, thank you very much. Well, can you tell me where her ladyship is, Inspector? Hawkwood. Former Inspector, actually. And your name is? Rihanna. Rihanna Weir. I'm the head cook here at Prosser Hall. Well, Mrs Weir. Not Mrs. Just Rihanna to you. I thought the cooks in these posh piles were usually known as Mrs. So-and-so. I'm not married. And I made a name for myself at the finest Parisian eateries before Lady Prudence hired me, so I see no reason to conceal it now under an out dated system. Gail and Burnham trade an eye-rolling look, airs and graces above her station, all right, but Hawkwood's still humouring her. Of course. Well, Rihanna, Lady Prue's in there giving her statement to Inspector Weldon. So if you care to wait, I'm sure Sergeant Burnham would be more than happy to take yours, wouldn't you, Sergeant? Burnham actually smiles, thinly, of course, for once, more than happy for the chance to put a lofty cook in her place. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I would. Rihanna scoffs, and I don't have time for this look as she breezes past Hawkwood to open the sitting room door. Which? Rihanna freezes as she opens the door, turns to him sharply. Excuse me? Your name, Rihanna. It's Welsh for witch, isn't it? 
it can also mean queen, which is the definition I prefer. Inside the room, Lady Prue and the others pause, look over. Brianna, what's going on, dear? Lady Prudence, I merely wanted to inquire about dinner when this man stopped me. Norman cranes around to see Hawkwood in the doorway, gives him a look. Well, you did tell me to wait in the hall. Inspector Wellman, if you're finished with me for now, I really do need to consult with my femme chefess and freshen up for dinner. Uh, yes, of course, Lady Prudence. We'll come back to you later if we have any further questions. She shepherds Rihanna back into the hall past Hawkwood. He smiles at them, watches them go. Not wolfish, but curious. Can we all go then? I think it's obvious you've got your main suspect, isn't it? Oh, is it now? Actually, we're not jumping to any conclusions just yet, Mr. Deering. Aren't we? Not without evidence. We're not vigilantes. But um, I'll still need everyone to remain on the premises for now whilst we conduct our investigation. Major Lion scoffs, not as unnerved by Wellman's more polite approach, turns his back on him and storms out into the hall. Should have known. Attending parties for odd balls and anarchists. What was I thinking? Wellman, abashed by the brush off, clears his throat, opens his mouth to try again, but... <clears throat> I'm off then. Positively dying for a gasper. He brushes rudely past Hawkwood and Gale in the, in the doorway as he goes. Gale throws Wellman a sympathetic look. Don't you worry, sir. We'll tell the other uniforms to make sure not one of them leaves the house till you crack this case. Behind her, Berman rolls his eyes, not quite so sympathetic. Could use a smoke myself, actually. Back in a tick. Wellman left standing alone and agape in the room. Follows the others out of the hall with a resigned sigh. Cut to exterior across the hall, side terrace day. Alone on the terrace with the fading light, Marcus tries, fails, to light a cigarette with a dodgy lighter. Another lighter suddenly flares to life near his face. He jumps, startled. Hawkwood's suddenly there, eyes gleaming in the flame light. Need a spark. Oh, uh, uh yes, uh, thanks. Leans in with his sieve to catch the flame, hands jittery, trying to avoid Hawkwood's unsettling gaze. My pleasure. Marcus, is it? Um, yes. So, tell me, Marcus, which window did you say you saw the Major arguing with Dormer out of? Oh, um, just there, facing out the back of the hall. Just over the kitchen, I think. They were going at it in the back garden. Right. Folly's just over there, through the trees. Bit too far to drag a body unobserved. Maybe went there together before he was killed. You, uh... Believe me, then. You think Lyon could have done it? Possibly. It's funny, though, with him throwing his shouty wobbler, it almost slipped my mind what he said about you not liking Dormer either. Major Lyon says a lot of things. He certainly does. But he's not wrong about that bit, is he? Uh, no, I didn't like him. Love playing soldier boy with Lyon just a bit too much. But he resigned his commission. I thought you respected him for that. Wouldn't go that far. He was still a debauched degenerate regardless. Debauch degenerate. Sounds like something Lion would say if he were a jumped up uni swat. Maybe you two have something in common besides your grudge. But so I dislike Dorma. I don't go around killing people just because I don't like them. Not like you, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me, I'm not that shallow either. Only went under after unpunished criminals myself. Mostly. Just thought you might have been angry with Dorma for threatening to reveal your little secret. What? Well, what secret? Hawkwood pulls a small journal from his pocket. Marcus pales. That's my... How... How did you get... When you rudely pushed by me on your way out of the sitting room. Sleight of hand. Comes in handy in my line of work. Give that back. It's no concern of yours. Just academic notes. No, no. It's a code book. And a very badly written one at that. So Lion was right about you being a Bolshe, surprisingly enough. <laughs> No, of course not. That's, that's, that's merely a, a, an intellectual exercise. Haven't been doing this very long, have you, the spy thing? Because quite frankly, you're a terrible liar. That's the real reason you didn't like Dormer. He found out you were a baby Soviet spy and threatened to... No, yes. Uh, look, look, I know I'm rubbish at it. I only did it as a lark to impress my Polish side club chums, but Dormer had nothing concrete on me. If it was military intelligence... He was, as it happens. Doubt he would have needed proof then. Just a whisper of espionage in the right ear would have been enough to put you away for a while. Motive enough for murder, I think. Well, well then I'd have to be even more of an idiot to kill a military spook, wouldn't I? Go ahead and show that journal to whomever you'd like, former Inspector Hawkwood. 
I suspect they won't believe you of all people, given your own sins. As he turns to head back inside, Hawkwood muses thoughtfully. By the way, Deering, how do you feel about salt? Marcus pauses at the French doors, looks back with an odd expression, covering or genuinely perplexed. Scoffs, shakes his head without replying, goes in. Hawkwood smiles to himself. Cut to exterior faucet hall, front drive day. Hawkwood comes out the French entrance, sees Wellman looking at the NSE PC escorts, John May. Major Lion into the police car. You're actually bringing Lion in? What brought that on? Well, I've been going over the statements from the other guests and right now he's the closest thing we've got to a suspect. What with the row he had with Dormer, I thought we should at least bring him in for a proper interview to see if he gives up anything else useful. Hmm. What? Hmm. Oh, you think he's innocent, don't you? Well, Lion's certainly capable of murder. Choleric beggar that he is, and he's a soldier to boot, so he's used to killing when he has to. Well, you think maybe someone else. What's that? A very poor excuse for a code book. Deering's. Lad fancies himself a would be Soviet spy. Not entirely sure a lightweight uni egghead could take on military broke in a fair tussle, though. Right. Well, we'll bring him next if nothing comes of Lion. Want to come along and sit in on the interview? Burnham stride marches up as they're talking. Mm, tempting, but the Major had probably blow a gasket if I was seen here. And I know the Sergeant here would object to my presence. I'm surprised you have any respect for proper procedure at all, Hawkwood. <laughs> Not usually, no. But I think I'd be of more use to you lot here. A few things I want to follow up on. Oh, all right then. Do me a favour, would you? Ask him... Might rattle him enough to work. Okay. Um, I will. Thanks. Wellman heads to the car. Awkward, cherished grins at Vernon. Off you pop then, Sergeant. Mustn't keep the inspector waiting. He turns and heads back to the front steps of Prosser Hall, whistling cheerfully as Vernon gives him one last, seething, suspicious glance before following, well following Wellman. Cut to interior Prosser Hall, Manor House, Lady Prue's bedroom. Lady Prue sat at her vanity table, blithe spirit placed by melancholic pensiveness as she pimp primps her face in the mirror, moves her hands up as if to do her hair next, freezes at the sight of Hawkwood in the mirror as he leans in the doorway, watching her. She turns in her chair, cold, are it so iron again. Inspector Hawkwood, I don't recall inviting you into my boudoir. He smoothly shifts from observing mode back to amiable grin. Former Inspector. And I didn't think you'd mind all that much, given your usual free-spirited attitude at your soirees. Regardless of how I may behave in public, it doesn't give you the right to simply wander in. Which is exactly what he does before she even speaks. <laughs> Comes in and sits on her bed, casual, but without any hint of innuendo. Not to worry, your ladyship. Your uh, virtue is safe with me. She looks relieved for a beat, then suddenly affronted. Because of my age, I suppose. Not a gorgeous young thing anymore. Nonsense. You're still utterly captivating. Just not my type, so to speak. No offence. I see. Then why are you... The murder in your folly, remember? Wanted to have a bit of a chat. Hmm. Oh. But that charming Inspector Wellman already took my statement. God, here I thought I was the charming one. But since I got sent off to Coventry, I missed that bit. Mind another question or two? Go on, then. I've nothing to hide. As he leans back on the bed, Hawkwood clocks a few old photos on her night table. Large family of children, mostly boys, one girl. He picks one up, studying it with curiosity. You and your brothers? All gone now, except myself and Orville. Prosser menfolk are a bit like mayflies, I'm afraid. So with them gone and Orville giving up to become a church mouse, you get the lot. Nice bit of luck for you, I'd say. I do suppose you're not implying that I somehow disposed of my other brothers just for the inheritance. No, 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 sorry, bad joke. I've read your family's history, nothing too suspicious, for the most part. Well, there was Jonah's rather bizarre demise on the yacht with that unnamed parliament member. <laughs> no, that was... And they never did figure out where they got the Iron Maiden from. <laughs> right. Well, now about Dormer's murder. Uh, committed right here on my poor prosers estate grounds. The scandal sheets will love that too. Unless we get this cleared up sharpish. Might help if you knew if any of your other guests beside the Major might have had a motive. Oh, you're not 
going to ask if I... No, I'm pretty sure you didn't. Whatever secrets you have, it's nothing to do with Dorma's death. They trade a look. What is he implying? At that moment, her brother appears in the doorway, reacts with an agape shock at seeing Hawkwood reclining casually in Lady Prune's bed. Inspector Hawkwood! What are you doing in Lady Prudence's oh, bedroom? Uh, he was just leaving, Orville. Weren't you, Inspector? <laughs> I was, actually. Comfy though her bed is, I can assure you I meant no impure intentions towards your sister or uh, father. Uh, good, good. Not that Prudence isn't capable of taking care of herself, of course. <laughs> so about your other guests, milady? Well, William was a bit of a rake, tried to seduce just about everyone with that virile charm of his. A bit like you, rather. But I can't think of anyone in the in particular who wished him violence because of his proclivities. Can you work on? Uh, no, Prue. Uh, I'm afraid. Affairs at the heart are beyond my purview. Remembering the awkwardness between Father Prosser and W.C. Gale earlier, Hawkwood eyes him with a mischievous gleam. Are they really, Father? Yes, yes, of course. I'm a, I'm a priest. <clears throat> Inspector, if I've answered all your questions, I really do need to finish getting ready for dinner. Of course. Come on, Father, let's leave your sister to primp in peace. Father Prosser hedges, nods, smiles at Prue, nearly knocking a vase off the stand by the door as he turns back into the hall. Awkward sighs, leaning in confidentially towards Prue. And take it from someone who used to hide behind a mask, milady. You don't need to. And with that enigmatic remark, Awkward winks at her and goes. Prudence turns back to the mirror, a cryptic, conflicted look on her own face. Cut to. Interior wintry on the world police station. Interview room. Major Lyon sat at the table, lividly sour, as Wellman sits down with a polite smile. Burnham stands stiff sentry at the door. So, uh, Major Lyon. Called my superiors, did you? Kept up on me? Um, well, yes, actually, and... So they've told you about my sterling service record, then? Yes, sir. I don't doubt it. But as far as this murder case goes... I, I told you I was just disappointed that Dormer had chose to resign his... You were more than disappointed, though. You two had a huge row. What of it? Been chums for years. Got a bit personal as... That's all. How personal? Doesn't matter. We patched things up. Uh, well, Deering didn't say anything about you. Then he didn't see all of it, did he, little snoop? Dormer was very much alive when I left him in the back garden. Yes, I, I imagine so, since he was actually found dead in the folly. But you two could have gone there together after, or met there later. And why would we do that? Well, inspect former Inspector Hawkwood. He wanted me to ask you if the two of you were part of uh, the sacred band of Thebes. He said you'd know what it meant. Gobsmacked, Major Lyon pales, hedges at a loss for words. Major? Wellman may not get a historical reference to the meaning, but the meaning sinks in his twigs to Major Lyon's reaction. Vernon doesn't. Oh, so uh, you, you and Dorma were- Yes, damn it. I suppose that devil Hawkwood was just itching for a chance to humiliate me. Well, actually, I don't think that was his intention. He, he may come off as a bit flippant, but he means well. And I don't think he believes you killed him either. But we had to be sure. I mean, with your temper. Fine. Yes, I was angry with William. Felt a bit betrayed after he left the service, left us. Burnham's eyes widen as the light finally dawns. Really? But I, him? But I would never ever have killed him. I, I, I couldn't. And when I saw that picture of his body, I... You've no idea what that's like, do you? Not being able to grieve one's comrade openly. No, sir, I, I don't. My sympathies. Damn your sympathies! So you believe me then, that I'm innocent? I do. What about Marcus Deering? I know you don't like him, but you think he's capable of murder. Hawkwood pinched a code book off him. Yes, William told me he found out about his would-be spy games. Always said that little ferret was a bolshie. Wouldn't put it past him to be a murdering cutthroat either. But we'll take another look at him. But was there anyone else, do you think? More than likely, William was much more of a libertine than me. It's why he enjoyed Lady Prudence's parties so much. Plenty of fresh game to be had. I'm sure there'll be others who felt ill-used as well. 
<clears throat> right, well, uh, thank you for your cooperation, Major. You, uh, you won't mention this? No, no reason to. You're, you're free to go, sir. Sergeant, let's give Major a lift back to Prosser Hall. But, but, sir... But Wellman's gone already, leaving Burnham floundering. Cut to interior wintergreen in the world police station front desk. Gail, behind the front desk, spots a pensive Wellman passing by on the way to the office. She waves him down with a file. Oh, sir, Inspector Willem. Uh, yes, Addy, uh, WPC Gail. Oh, Addy, please, sir. Postmortem on our folly murder. Oh, uh, thanks, Addy. He studies it for a beat, almost as though it's not registering. Do you need me to...? Uh, no, no, it's, it's just, you know, pathologist's usual messy writing. <laughs> of course, as you say, sir. Hmm. Well, looks like nothing we didn't know already. Nasty knife wound in the gut, salt in the mouth. Oh, yes, I wondered about that. When I read the report, it sounded a bit odd. Oh, right, you weren't in the folly with us, were you? Uh, Hawk, uh, we found salt in the victim's mouth. Burnham escorts Major Lyon by the BG towards the front door. Seeing Wellman, he hands Lyon off to a PC and comes over. Well, now that's over egg in the uh, pudding, isn't it? What with a stab wound, mouthful of salt and the... Uh... Uh, sir, uh, might I have a word? Let me stop you there, Sergeant. No, we're not going to tell the military about Lyon. But, sir, it's illegal and... And it has no bearing on the case. So let's say no more about it. Yes? Sir. We should go back to Prosser Hall. Hawk had left to his own devices for too long. <laughs> we'll likely have another murder on our hands. You're coming this time, Addy. If you don't mind, sir, the uh, file room's in a pro it's a proper dog's dinner again. Hey, I'll not sleep a wink tonight if, it, if I don't get it sorted straight away. <laughs> right. Hang on, Addy. What was it you were starting to say before? Something about over-egging? Oh, you must, you must not have got to that bit in the report, sir. Poison, if you please. On top of everything else. Honestly, these killers these days. Wellman's <laughs> eyes wide open. He flips the post-mortem again, scans quickly till he finds out what she's talking about. Ah, oh, yes, I, I missed that. F thank you, Addy. Right, Sergeant, come on, then. Wellman Burnham leave the station. Gail shakes her head affectionately, sighs, sighs, turns back to a huge stack of files. <sighs> I don't think I've forgotten about you lot. Have you sorted as quick as you like, won't we, Addy? Cut to exterior Prosser estate grounds night. Hawkwood, Father Prosser walk in the grounds near the terrace where Hawkwood Marcus spoke earlier. Hawkwood's hands are jammed deep in his pockets as he ruminates, his usual cheeky grin absent. Prosser clocks it, hums and haws at first, then... You know, I, I wanted to thank you for letting me tag along on this investigation, Inspector Hawkwood. <laughs> hmm. Not really investigating so much as getting some fresh night air to clear the cogwheels first. And I suppose you can't do much harm out here, can you? No, I suppose not. Uh, forgive my boldness, but I get the sense you don't much care for the church. Or for me. I don't. The church, I mean. You're all right. Even if you can't hold on to a Bible to save your life. But I parted ways with the old God a long time ago. I, I thought I heard somewhere your parents are both missionaries. Yeah, and they died for their troubles. Fine reward for the faithful, isn't it? Do them in with cholera and leave a lad to fend for himself. Is... Is that what drove you to...? Only one priest I ever met who I ever thought was worth his salt. Of course, I didn't really twig that till after I tried to kill him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I heard that too. But just, just think, what a blessing in disguise that was. Trying to kill a great man like Father... Well, you see, if you hadn't tried to kill him, you wouldn't have been set on the path back to redemption. Ah, save the sermon, Father. To be honest, I only asked you to come along as a sounding board. Uh, oh. <laughs> Pick your biblical brain about the uh, salt in Dormer's mouth thing. Uh, oh, yes, uh, happy to help. First thought that sprang into my head was the salted with fire bit. Ah, from Luke. No. Mark. Um, Chapter 9, verse 49. Missionary's parents, remember? So maybe that's what the killer had in mind, a kind of purification? Or, or, or it could be referring to the uh, chap who sowed the ground with salt. Demolished a city, I believe. Mm. 
Yeah, Romans did it to Carthage too, but maybe we're overthinking this. Killers aren't generally big on history, except me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Non-biblical, what's its uh, practical uses for salt? You mean like, like using it to preserve a body or, or, or food? That's it. Sorry. <laughs> That's it, of course, salt, food. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't quite uh... Food, father. I can't think on an empty stomach. That's where the kitchen is, yeah? Where Lion and Dormer were arguing in the back garden. Uh, yes. But, but you were saying about the salt. Go I can wait. Do me a favour and go wait up in front of, uh, wait up front for Inspector Wilmer to return, would you? When you see him, tell him he can find me in the kitchen, got it? He's gone before the bewildered father Prosser can reply. Cut to interior of Prosser Hall, Manor House, kitchen. Hawkwood stands staring out a window that looks out into the back garden as Rihanna comes marching into the kitchen. Stop short as he sees him, more haughtily annoyed than startled. You again. What are you doing in my kitchen? Evening, Rihanna. I've got a bit peckish. Hope you don't mind. He nods at an empty plate and half full glass of wine on the table. Rihanna's eyes bead on the open bottle beside it as he's seemingly distracted, pulling out a silver case in the sick. Did no one ever teach you proper etiquette? You should have asked first. And I'd appreciate it if you didn't smoke in here. It taints the food. Sorry, bad habits. Tend to forget the social niceties sometimes as a lawless avenging vigilante. <laughs> but I was a copper once. Oh, so I've heard. Now get out. I have work to do. So do I, actually. You know, I realised in all the hubbub that we never got your statement earlier. Seeing as how you always rather deftly avoided giving it. I've simply been... Busy is all. Uh, I'll give it to you now, if you wish. Yes, by all means. Let's start with this. Can't help but notice you have a lovely view of the back garden from here. What of it? So chances are, you would have seen Major Lyon and Dormer having their little row earlier. You spend so much time in the kitchen, it would have been hard not to notice, given how they were carrying on from what I've heard. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, I did see them, come to think of it. Flash cut. Rihanna sees Lion Dormer arguing out the window. Funny you didn't mention it before. As I said, busy. Slipped my mind. And you obviously already have a witness who's told you about it. Ah, yes, the redoubtable Mr Deering. Yeah, he decoded it, but I suspect he didn't see everything. <laughs> Unlikely. The man talks more than he sees. Not good practice for a would-be spy, I think. So you twig that too. Not very good, is he? <laughs> Not as good as you or me. Not as observant, I mean. As he talks, he casually sits in a chair, taking a slug from his wine glass. Rihanna seems to be enjoying a private joke. You know, you really ought not to be drinking that wine. It's, it's from her ladyship's private stock. Oh, and yet I found it in this hamper stashed in the pantry. Picks up a picnic hamper from the floor that he casually plonks on the table. Eyes flare a bit, but she stays cool. Some other interesting items in it too. Untouched food, salt cellar. What's so interesting about that? I took myself on a little picnic earlier. Needed to get out of the hot kitchen for a bit of fresh air. The salt cellar was empty. Oh, I spilled it. Clumsy me. He also got clumsy with the knife. Oh, I know you're no idiot. I'm sure you washed it and put it back. But there's a blood stain at the bottom of the hamper, probably from the knife. I'm guessing when we test it, it'll match Dormer's type. And if we're very lucky, we might even find a bit more residue once we have all those knives tested. Peg exactly which one you used. Well, this is all a rather charming theory, but hardly damning proof. Anyone could have taken that hamper and used it after I was finished. You mean they snuck in and out of your kitchen without you noticing? Oh, how many times must you be reminded I've been busy? And besides, what would be my motive? First thing I noticed about Dormer was how good looking he was. <sighs> Told Sergeant Burnham that may well be the key. He's going to hate that I was right. Let me top you up, Inspector. I suspect that you'll need it. She picks up the open bottle on the table, refills his glass. Appreciate it. 
You're being an awfully good sport about this, considering I'm about to ruin you. We'll see. Oh, please, do go on. Lady Prue said Dormer was a regular at her dues. And despite his being cosy with Lion, he was still quite a Casanova. And I can't imagine he would have overlooked someone as exotically beautiful as you, even if you were just a cook. Oh, yes. He noticed me, all right. So you two had a little fling. We did. But then he moved on, didn't he? Two others saw back to Lion. Whatever the reason, that stuck your, stung your pride, and I've seen your pride in action. You don't suffer slights gladly. No, I certainly do not. And you knew he was a regular here. He'd be back. So you planned your revenge, waiting patiently for your opportunity. It's what I would have done once upon a time. And then... Insert flashcard. Rihanna watching Lion Dormer arguing out kitchen window. This time we see Lion finally storm off, leaving Dormer alone. Rihanna smiles thoroughly turns away from the window. You finally saw your chance after his fight with Lion. Insert flash cut. Rihanna approaches Dormer in the garden, holding the hamper and smiling coquettishly, comforting the upset Dormer as she leads him down the garden path. Guessing you lured him to the folly with some tea and sympathy in his time of need, yeah? Insert flash cut. Rihanna and Dormer in folly, in seeming embrace. Dormer's face contorts in pain. He drops to the ground. We see Rihanna is holding a bloody knife and smiling, satisfied. And there would have been enough of his other jilted conquests here at this party already who would have suspected a lowly cook. Who? Indeed. Wellman, Burnham come urgently sweeping into the kitchen. Far across are following, albeit a bit more cautiously. There you are. Got the postmortem back for Dorma. Turns out beside the knife wound, he was also... He stops as it sinks in. Awkward at the table in his casual cat and mouse game with Rihanna, the wine glass, his face falls. Poisoned. Yeah, I sort of figured that. Hawkwood, you, you you didn't drink that. He never learns. Oh, oh dear. Uh shouldn't shouldn't we uh, Much as I hate to disappoint Frank, I won't be needing last rites just yet, Father. Didn't touch a drop. I'm not that much of an idiot. What? But I saw you. That's the... Yeah, it's the one from the hamper that you poisoned, but I didn't actually drink from it. You just assumed I did since it was next to my glass, which I filled from another not-quite-so-fatal bottle. Another bad habit of mine, misdirection. Comes in handy, though. My, aren't you the clever one? Cut to interior, exterior, cross a hall, kitchen, back garden. Rihanna watches through the kitchen windows as Major Lion and Dorma argue heatedly in the back garden. She's riveted, smiling evilly as she watches. After Major Lion finally smalls off, leaving Dorma alone, Rihanna turns to the window, moves towards a picnic camper that's sitting next to the kitchen table. Cut to interior possible back garden day. Rihanna, picnic camper in hand, approaches a visibly upset Dorma in the back garden, smiling, seeming friendly and comforting now, as she takes his arm and leads him to up the path through the woods in the direction of the folly. Cut to interior folly day. Rihanna and Dorman in seemingly passionate embrace on the chaise long in the folly, hamper on the floor behind, beside them, the open bottle of wine in view. Dorma stiffens, grimaces, collapses on the floor. Rihanna is holding a bloody knife, smiling. Cut to. Interior, Prosser Hall, Manor House, Main Hall Night. Wellman and Hawk would confer as Rihanna sits in cuffs now, proud haughtiness undiminished keenly avoiding the sad stare of Lady Prue from across the room. Father Prosser approaches her, smiling with Bible in hand, goes to open his mouth. Don't even think about it, priest. I repent nothing. Thank you. Father Prosser gulps, pivots back towards Lady Prue. Burnham comes over to Wellman after talking to PCs, hands him items. Search of her quarters turned up the victim's ID along with a few letters of a sordid nature, sir. Well, well. Bit of a risk her holding on to this stuff, wasn't it? Sometimes they like a souvenir. Something for her wounded pride to remember him by. And did you collect souvenirs of your victims, Awkward? <laughs> yeah. Told myself I was doing it for the sake of justice. Taking out the villains didn't much want to remember their faces. As he trails off, Wellman clears his throat. Back on the topic. <clears throat> Still, I don't wa get why she needed, the needed to over-egg the pudding as Addy put it. Why bother stabbing him if he was already poisoned with the wine? Hawkwood ambles over to Rihanna as he talks, enjoying himself. Because she wanted to soften him up a bit first before she administered the killing blow personally. 
look him in the eye, watch him suffer. But him being a military lad, she knew she couldn't overpower him physically without some help first. Belladonna? Foxglove? Bit of both, actually. Recipe of mine I concocted in the kitchen. Ha! Devil's berries and dead man's bells. I said you were a witch, didn't I? I'm not saying I approve. For God's sake, I'm reformed, remember? Yes, well, I'll try and remember that. And the salt? Was that some sort of um, statement about him being evil? <laughs> That's absurd. It's a preservative. Any good cook knows that. I'd hoped to delay the odour of decay till I could come back later to bury him properly. I simply detest the smell of rotted meat. How about that, Sergeant? You twigged it, surprisingly. <laughs> Though I must admit, there was a certain satisfaction in stuffing and seasoning him like a dead pig. Even Hawkwood seems a bit unsettled by the gleam of sadism behind her eyes, behind the haughty airs and graces. Um, right, well, I think we're finished here. Care to do the honours? Wellman nods at the PC to escort her out. Hawkwood clocks Major Lyon off to the side, glaring at Rihanna dolefully as she goes. Marcus siddles up to Hawkwood and Wellman as he smirks at Lyon. Did the world a favour, though, didn't she? One less ruddy pansy. Now Lyon will have to find someone else to play soldier boy with. A beat. Hawkwood doesn't even look at Marcus, but his mouth twitches, his face unreadable. He pulls the code book, the code book out of his pockets, holds it up to Burnham. Sergeant, do me a favour and hang on to this. And if word should happen to ever get out about the Major's private concerns, see that it gets into the hands of the proper authorities, would you? Beat as Burnham takes the book, unsure. Wellman nods at him. Uh, yes. Yes, sir, I'd be happy to. Marcus pales. Sputters indignantly, finally storms off. Well done, Sergeant. Without another word or typically cheeky remark, Hawkwood goes to follow Rihanna out of the police car, solemn, pauses as he passes an equally distraught looking Lady Prue. You know, if you're looking for a new cook, I've heard Addie's Grand does wonders with scones. Thank you, Inspector. I shall consider it. Former Inspector, please. Back soon. Exterior Village Road, the Fool's Crown Pub. Wellman, strolling down the road towards the pub, stops as he sees Hawkwood sat on a bench on the green across the way, alone and drinking from a flask. He approaches him. An outlandish knight came from the Northlands, and he came wooing to me. Said he would take me to the Northlands, and he would marry me. Hawkwood? Hawkwood's wistful look smoothly shifts to his cheeky grin. Jack! Everything properly sorted with our vengeful cook? I trusted you padded one of your cells for her. Yeah, she's not going anywhere. What about you? Why are you out here drinking when you could be doing it inside the Fool's Crown instead? Nah, copper's local. Don't think I'd be too welcome in there. What with my history. Burnham's not the only one on the Fool's who hates me. He just doesn't bother hiding it. Well, no one's going to say anything if you go in there with me. Oh, even better, being seen sucking up to the son of the chief super. Stop making excuses. Come on. All that size. No getting out of it. He gets up to follow him. Cut to. Interior of the Fool's Crown Pub day. Off-duty PCs hang around in cluster near the bar, socialising. Gail's among them, but too busy chatting to notice Wellman and Hawk would walk in. The other PCs pay no heed to them either. Just as I said. Just have a seat, will you? Something I think you should see. Awkward sighs, plonks down in a chair as Wellman signals to the barman, to the usual, sits back down with him. So, what were you so eager to, uh... Look. He nods towards the back corner of the pub, empty except for Burnham, sat alone at a long table, sits with the same stiff formality that he stands with, a mostly untouched drink in front of him as he stares off, sit in the seeming brown study. Ah. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. Doesn't exactly go out of his way to make friends on the force either. Fussy job's worth that he is. Yeah, he keeps his own company, that's for certain. You know why? Don't much care, but tell me anyway. You heard of the Manchester Seven? I know it was a long I know it was long before either of us was on the force, but Syndicate of Bent Coppers exposed for taking payoffs from local gang bosses. Had their greasy fingers in all sorts of illegal doings. Mm. 
Burnham's father was their ringleader. The worst of the worst. Really? I thought that fella's name was... Burnham's mother changed her name. Couldn't take the shame of the notoriety, so she moved herself and her son down to Wintergreen on the Wald to get a fresh start. He was only 15 at the time. I see. Burnham always wanted to be a copper like his father, but once he found out how just how bent he was... What did it prove he wasn't anything like his old man? Swung the other way completely, Mr. Law and Order. Won't break a single rule for fear of his father's shadow will ruin him. Probably the reason that you rub him up the wrong way. What you represent. I wasn't bent. I was just... You just executed the bad guys in a very unlawful <laughs> vigilante fashion. <laughs> Jack. Jack and I thought you actually liked me. I do, Hawkwood. That's why I'm telling you this. You fit in here more than you realise. Do you know Wintergreen on the world's nickname? Gateway to the Cotswolds, right? It's on that quaint little sign. No, the other nickname. Can't imagine you came here without doing your homework first. You always do. I may have. Enlighten me, though. Locals call it Wistful on the World. The place seems to attract folks looking for something. Second chances, redemption, maybe. I'm already formed. Thanks, awfully. I just came here to set up shop as a detective, that's all. Surprised you didn't settle where your inspector who helped you get your pardon was posted. He obviously trusted you enough to give you a second chance. Yeah, well, this is just a handy location to Gloucester, you know? More villains passing through from the city. Right. Well, just so long as you've got no plans to start hunting down and executing said villains again. Yes? Detective work only. Jesus, Jack. What happened to the village of second chances? You're beginning to sound like Burnham. Speaking of which... No, no, not a good idea. I'll be good, Scout's honour. He strolls off towards the back of the pub, well men's size. You were never a boy scout. On Burnham, alone, in less lively end of the pub, staring stoically at something we won't see, Hawkwood approaches. Burnham, mind if I... No, you may not. He sits down anyway. Not too close, though. Burnham size. Come on, Sergeant. Truce. Temporary one while we're off duty, anyway. I'm off duty. You're not even an officer of the law anymore. And even if you were, you treated it more like a game than a calling. True enough. I do miss being the golden boy of the yard, of course. But Wintergreen's not so bad. Chance to start over. Burnham looks uneasy. Something in common with Hawkwood? No. Hawkwood clocks where Burnham was gazing before. Pub wall opposite his table, various old photos of uniformed coppers. Many look like they're receiving commendations. He glances back at Burnham, now staring down at his untouched drink. Wistful on the wall. He looks up as Wellman comes over to them with his own drink. Sergeant Burnham. Awkward. I thought it might be wise to join you two in case you uh, needed a referee. <laughs> Are you kidding? We're like two peas in a pod, right, Sergeant? But join us anyway. Frankie no mate, here is none too chatty at the moment. Francis. <laughs> right, but apologies. To Wistful on the Wold. Wistful on the Wold. Cheers. They knock back their drinks. Burnham doesn't join in the toast, but finally takes a hesitant sip of his drink. Slight untensing of his posture, until a noisy commotion at the door makes them all turn. It's Father Prosser, having dropped a small pile of books he bought from the recreational reading. Oh, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> so, so very, very sorry. Gail at the bar in the big G looks over with another amused PCs. Hawkwood blocks her own sympathetic, wistful smile. Not looking for the priesthood, is he, that one? <laughs> He's trying, anyway. Gail goes to help the flustered priest pick up his books. Man's a danger to himself and his congregation. Well, if it doesn't work out, at least the process might finally get an heir one of these days. Lady Prue never did marry. Hawkwood's cogs seemed tweaked by something Wellman said. Will you just excuse me? I just remembered something I wanted to do. Now? Can't it wait? No rest for the wicked. Next round's mine when I get back. As he strides out, Wellman Burnham trade a look. Typical Mercy or Hawkwood. Cut to. Interior possible manor house. Lady Prue's bedroom. Lady Prue at her dressing room table again. Wears a simple dressing gown now instead of her soiree vest. Family photo that Hawkwood was looking at earlier is on the table in front of her. She reaches up as if to primp her hair again, as she was about to do when Hawkwood dropped in. But instead of primping it, she pulls the whole chic do right off. It's a wig. Underneath her real hair is iron grey, cut short, combed back. 
Yet she still looks elegantly beautiful, or handsome, take your pick, even without all the glamour. She tosses the wig aside, picks up the photo to gaze at it, same melancholy look in her eyes as before. Then... Much better. She hardly reacts this time, just sighs, puts the pick down. I thought we'd discussed you not coming into my boudoir uninvited. And through the window this time, no less. I know, bad habits and all. But it keeps me in practice. Got to have some fun. He jumps off his perch on the open windowsill, goes to sit on the bed again with his usual casual air. I mean it, though. You're still a real stunner, even without all that wall paint and theatricality. Very kind of you, I'm sure. But if you don't mind, I'm feeling a bit tired and hungover. Weekend long parties and murderous cooks tend to do one in rather. Yeah, sorry about having to book cart Rihanna off. Probably spoiled your dinner plans. Quite all right. We may do with sandwiches. But now that you finally know my little secret, would you kindly relinquish my bed? Actually, that's not the secret I came here to ask you about. Well, what else could I possibly... You really did kill off one of your brothers, didn't you? Feet. She finally turns round, discomposed but still poised. I can assure you I'm not a murderer. Didn't say you were. Just said that you killed one of them. Big difference when it comes to intent. I assume you're not referring to Jonah. Mr. Yacht incident? No. That was just... weird. No, I met the one who was already in bad health. Of which there were several, as I said, pros are men are fragile. Jacob. Files said the doctor gave him at least a year or so to live, but he was dead within two months. Your family doctor signed off on it without even a proper post-mortem. The cancer progressed much quicker than they'd originally predicted. Jacob was suffering horribly. Even worse, he couldn't take the indignity of it. His failing body, he, so he finally asked me to, to help him end it. Why you? In case you hadn't noticed, I'm the strong one in the family. Poor Orville is as gentle as a lamb. Does he know? I've never told him as a brother or a priest. He may have suspected, but... He'd never judge you for it. He's a good kid for a priest. So just out of curiosity, how did you... I put something into his tea one night at his request. He went in his sleep. Quick, painless. Well, at least you're being merciful. Unlike Rihanna. Or me. Never makes the guilt go away, though, does it? No. I get it. It's a bear to live with. Sorry for what it's worth. Are you going to turn me in? Even a mercy killing is against you. <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm hardly one to judge. My scroll of things being what it is, just wanted to clear things up for my own curiosity. You're safe as houses, my lady. Oh, well then. We shall say no more of that. May, may I expect you at my ne next soiree, since this one was so rudely disrupted? Of course. Do us a favour, though. Send an invite to Sergeant Burnham. What? The sour-faced one? <laughs> yeah, that's him. Might be a bit less sour if he's dragged to a couple of do's now and then, even if he kicks up a fuss about it. As you wish. I do owe you a favour or two. Oh, what's his Christian name? So that I may properly address the invitation. Paul good pause as he goes to climb out the window again. Looks back with his devilishly mischievous grin. Frank. With that, he turns and jumps out. Lady Bruce smiles. Cut to exterior Prosser estate grounds day. Awkward hands stuffed in his pocket and whistling contentedly, walks away from the manor house towards a winding road, a dark silhouette from the golden sunlight against an idyllic Cotswold green, trench coat flaring behind him with a devilishly charming dash. End episode.